So the 28th time that New Zealand have played Ireland and Ritalik, the opportunity to get into it, but it's been flipped away by Tommy Bow, and Ireland have regained the kickoff and done it well. Johnny Sexton, here is the skipper, Paul O'Connell, and they'll be looking to him for inspiration today as well. There's no question about that, as Ireland have it through Rob Carney. There was a question mark over Carney as well. Connor Murray is at halfback. Here is O'Connell getting involved again early. All Blacks trying to turn it over. Wyatt Crockett in there. And it looks like they have. That's a great turnover. And it's coming for Aaron Smith. Cruden standing away to his right. Hands it on. Dag looking to get through the gap. But to David Carney, who's playing on the left wing side. And spoiling it was O'Brien. Penalty though. And no, in fact, it was held by the All Blacks. Thought it might have been against O'Brien. Well, I think it was best that was actually over the ball. Got the New Zealand player there for holding on too long in the finish, Nigel Owen. It was a good turnover from Wyatt Crockett. From the ruck, O'Connell was coming back from the far side. The transition time, he was too deep. Kieran Reid went forward. And quick as a flash, Crockett was on it. The All Blacks attacked down that right-hand side. But Ireland were equal. They got the turnover back. So one apiece in the early exchanges. Dag trying desperately to get through the gap there. But Ireland now through Rory Best. There's a huge man in the line out here, Devon Toner. But they go with O'Connell who tips it and finds Murray taken down by McCaw. Now standing over it is uh, Kean Healy. A little bit of controversy yesterday when he said he didn't really like the Harker very much. Taken in by Jamie Heaslip. Now Murray sends it wide. Here's the man with the beard, Gordon Darcy. So happy to be back in this Irish team as Murray sends it wide. And Rob Carney, you'll see a lot of him up from fullback today. Connor Murray flicks it over. And there's the big guy I was talking about, Devon Toner. Now Sexton gets it wide for Darcy. O'Driscoll puts it onto the boot. And awkward for Dag. And it might have been knocked on by Dag here. We'll see. Yes, it is. Nigel Owen says so. It was an interesting option from O'Driscoll. They were actually building quite nicely there, Ireland. But the bounce was favourable. It actually set up beautifully. This is the line-out take one-handed from O'Connell. Superb. And just slaps it down to Connor Murray. From there, they launch their attack. But good early hands on the ball. The midfield looks dangerous. Darcy and O'Driscoll can punch. And Kearney Can out. Rob Kearney out the back. Looks nice and fit and ready to play. Well, they've done what they wanted to do, Ireland. They've got the crowd in the game. So, first scrum of the game, Connor Murray. Trouch! Bind! It's a pretty experienced Set. Irish front row here. Yes, mate! On this loose head, it's uh, Kean Healy. Murray gets it in, trapped by Heaslip. He's going to have to release it, does so, and turn back on the inside for trouch, David trouch, Carney. Release. Murray goes again from Healy Murray good build up here for Ireland as Murray here's Heaslip big power from number 8 they're only 5 metres away now Ireland and a real opportunity as Omani gets within a couple of metres now Murray goes himself he might have got there he's certainly over the line Got to check it upstairs by the looks of things. But Connor Murray, who was a big success on the Lions tour. Well, he certainly was over the line. There's no doubt about that. We could all see it. He's over. Just does he get it down? Jerome Garcia said, I think there was a knock on. Now, it's just whether he's dropped it. The ball goes to the ground, but has Retallick dislodged it? You'd have to say yes. He has dislodged it. He's not in control of that for mine. 
Let's have another look. Well, that particular angle is favourable to Ireland. Yes, it is. Hello, Graham. Yep, you may want to try. Thank you. Well, there you go. Try being awarded. And a little half back from Munster, Connor Murray gets the scoring underway here. That was a great start from Ireland. The build up leading to this, which resulted in the scrum off the O'Driscoll kick. And then the charges were nice and confrontational, quite direct. Ball runners just going at all black defenders, got in over the advantage line. Then it was the quick ball. Connor Murray decided to go back against the grain into the left hand side and got the ball down. Sexton's kick. In absolute silence. Reminds us of Munster a few years ago. Let's see whether that works out with the All Blacks kick, but a very good build up here. I certainly was. His look first. Then they have another go at the line there. Then they go with Mahoney. And then back on the legs. He just goes against the grain, Murray. And over he goes in three All Black tacklers. Great start from Ireland. New Zealand need to respond. Cruden comes to this near side this time, and Tona can't control it. And so the All Blacks will have the ball. It's been flung away by Hoare into the arms of Stephen Luatua. Getting a start to today as Smith goes to Cruden. Has a go at the gap, wriggling his way through. Got it off to Nonu at full steam. Just near the 22, Ma Nonu. Smith whips it off the deck immediately. Dag puts the kick in, but it's into touch. But Aaron Cruden taking the line on. Oh, he did. Equally, though, I don't think Dag, he'd like to get that kick back. I don't think it was the right option. They were way in behind. The ball speed was incredible. Look at the offload here from Cruden. Just wriggles free, as you mentioned. It gets the palm out and then rolls the ball out of the hand. Just nonchalantly offloads Nonu. Look at that ball placement. Bang! Away goes Smith. And I think Dag should have taken the contact there. Rory Best. Finding O'Connell. Good defensive. Line out by the Irish, held in the back here by Sean O'Brien, and making good progress. Still only 10 metres away from the line, the try scorer Murray. Now the All Blacks in after it, it's been lost, and Ireland are going to try and run this out from their own goal line. O'Driscoll sends it wide, but it's a poor pass, and problems here for David Carney. The All Blacks getting there in numbers. McCaw looks to go quickly. He's just got a little bit too excited there, the Irish. Maybe there was a bit of space, but you'd have to think that after that good drive from the line-out, Murray needed to go long, just get them out of their own territory, because now the mistake puts them under pressure. Absolutely right. Yeah, the kick was too short, didn't hit it well. They still won the ball back, and then there's an opportunity to kick. No one wanted to kick off their left foot, so they decided to run it. The all-black pressure have got them in this position. Andrew Hoare goes short to Lua Tua, pops it up nicely, McCaw charging round they're only 10 metres away, the All Blacks as Smith clears it out Falma Wiener Aaron Smith again and sold the little dummy and held it up, now it's with Andrew Hoare, probably in his last test match, battling his way close to the line Brody Retallick in an awkward position, but the All Blacks will somehow work this back, as Smith stretches in, now he clears it off to Cruden, away for Nonu looking to get away from O'Driscoll who hangs on ball is loose players arriving from all over the place and Ireland have gone over the top of this and Murray is able to get it away and Sexton can clear it's not out though and Dag just on his own side of halfway looking to link up with Sabia, but again the defence is good and Ireland pouring into the rucks Murray got a kick again, no fullback so back goes Jane and he hasn't touched it and hands it off to Cruden and Aaron Cruden clears it away but Ireland are bustling and hustling they certainly are, they're aggressive at the breakdown and all of this attack was built on the offensive 
way that they came forward on defence. Look at them, the way they hit the ruck. It's all legal. The ball goes bouncing forward. A toe had it, hack it from it. O'Connell. And then from there, Murray gets a better purchase on his kick. Good physical start from Ireland. Well, there was a nice little moment just before the teams broke up from the national anthems. Paul O'Connell, a great player. Brian O'Driscoll beside him. And they just had a bit of a, a hug and a word to each other. Two great players, maybe both of them playing their last against the All Blacks. Yes, they want to make it count. Yep, two warriors of Irish rugby, for sure. As it comes into the midfield, he slipped. Lowered in a good tackle by Cruden. Now Murray gets it away. And spinning nicely and popping it up here's Best. Rory Best, they're playing well with Ireland. There's no doubt about that at all. Here is Heaslip again. He's just picked himself off the ground and uh, taken down by Sam Whitelock. But right in centre field on the 22. And O'Brien almost got through. Got it away to Murray. He can't quite link up just yet. Standing over the ball. Here's O'Brien again. The green machine trying to drive him over. Now Murray clears it away. Best. And he's over. Rory Best. They've got two. Hang about the All Blacks can court score some special tries. You won't see a better one than that this year. What a build up. Rory Best finishes it, but every player was involved, particularly in the loose. It started with a nice set piece move. Then look at this. Murray goes around the back and steady hits the short run at Healy. The pop to Best. From there, the recycle is nice and quick. It goes out. His lip featured many times. O'Brien goes through the middle of the offload. Murray, fantastic hands, close to the turf. Again, the ball's nice and quick. They park up over it here. Out it goes to the right. Best is faced with two all-black defenders. Off the left foot and powers his way over. Oh, Ireland, they are simply on fire, TJ. Well, this is wonderful. It's not just about spirit and passion and determination. There was some fantastic skills, great ball support in that movement is this the same team that played Australia last week? No in name only there weren't many changes in fact none in the forwards a couple in the backs but as the All Blacks have discovered in 2013 they bring out the best they certainly do we're just whispering here target from Johnny Sexton two converted tries the first by Connor Murray the second by Rory Best and suddenly the All Blacks are 14 nil behind well this is an unbelievable start Ireland have done this in the past and haven't been able to sustain it can they do it today Not surprisingly, the crowd are right into this as Cruden keeps it low. This time Tona goes up, but it's deflected away. And it looks as though it's going to be an all-black ball. Yes, Ireland have got away to some roaring starts in games in the past. But just haven't been able to kick on. Stay green. 208, Tona. That's 610 in the old style. Huge man as Kieran Reid is the target at the back. And then they go short to Nonu. Oh, Johnny Sexton reeled away from that contact. But he seems okay. And the All Blacks need to pick it up here as Falmawina just did here's McCaw who made his debut here back in 2001 as Aaron Smith moves it away to Cruden defense is sound Luatua not held so just rolls one extra now here's Nonu looking to go past Mike Ross off it goes now to 
Ben Smith. Ball is loose and kicked away. Reed tries to bring it under control. And it's gone back. So it's a play on. 10 out from the 22. As Murray reaches in. And again, Ivan, give it a bit of width. As the little kick goes through, Roy might have been checked. No, it's OK. Snapped up by Jane. Crowd not happy about that. As the little kick through. Now Aaron Smith away for Cruden. And he's got a nice angle on this kick. And he got it away from Tommy Bow. And settled it all down inside the 22. It was very good from Cruden. Nice and composed. That's what the option required at the time. That's the O'Driscoll turnover. He manages to get the ball. The sexton kick. That's not really checked. That's fine. What the All Blacks are going to have to do is support the ball carrier and make sure that they're really accurate at the breakdown because the Irish are just hoeing in. We've got a problem here with uh, Rory Best. Everybody was looking around at the line-out saying, where is he? Well, he's being attended to. There he is. Well, they had a real opportunity prior to that sexton kick to Ireland. The turnovers caught the All Blacks unawares. And as they spun it out to the left, it was just the fact that somebody threw a big wide pass. They saw the space and recognised the numbers, but the, the pass took away the time and space. As we look at Rory Best, he doesn't look good. In fact, that does not look good at all. That looks like a break. And so Sean Cronin... The man won't be to come on in 16. The man from St Mary's College, Leinster. And I, I'm not all that happy about Johnny Sexton either. He's signalling to the sideline. I don't know that the number 10 is all that great after taking that hit, but this is a real blow for one of Ireland's better forwards. Well, they lose a lot as well. No disrespect at all to Cronin coming on, but he's very good over the ball, best. So yeah. they do lose something there. He's in, almost in tears as he leaves the field. So Sean Cronin throws. Dragged down by Devon Toner. And again, it's O'Brien parked at the back of this mall. Still moving. And this is very good concerted driving here from the Irish pack. McCaw trying to get in there to stop it. And it's going to be a penalty. They came in on the wrong angles, the All Blacks. And they are rattled. There's no question. 15 minutes into this game, they just can't get into it. Well, Ireland are winning everything they need to win. They're winning the odd breakdown, so they're turning the All Blacks ball over, but their line-out is functioning well at the moment. So they're getting a good foundation, good platform. They're not conceding ball. The All Blacks thrive off competing, of set-piece, frustrating teams. And at the moment, Ireland are winning and doing everything... Their scrum was good. Remember the lead up to the try. Their scrum was nice and solid. So everything they're doing is accurate. I'm surprised if Sexton's... He, he went into this with a hamstring complaint, though, didn't he, TJ? Not enough for body one. Yeah, no, he just took a heavy knock in the tackle. I think he's OK now, but just for a moment, he called for some attention while they were taking he's best off. It looks like he's all right now. O'Connell, the target. Lua Tua did a good job, got through, and here's an opportunity for the All Blacks to turn this over. Snapped up by Andrew Hoare, and off he goes. Just in Ireland's territory. Away it goes to Cruden, off it goes to Nonu. Just a little hesitant, wasn't quite sure, and took the inward path. As Aaron Smith rips it away again to Cruden, almost snuck through the gap. Good tackle, here's a gap for Aaron Smith. Beautiful stepping. O'Brien handed away by Ritalik. Here's Cruden again. Dag can't hang on. Oh, oh. They won't catch him. I don't think they will. This is Rob Carney. And this is going to be a third try. Wow. Not a man is in his seat. The minute that that ball went. From Israel Dag forward, if Carney could hold on to that, it was a big if because he juggled it, there was nobody there. You knew straight away if he could just hold the ball that he would have the speed, full back against number eight. Watch here as he just slightly struggles to gather it there. He gets it under the belly from there on, not a soul was going to catch him. This is a blistering, incredible start from Ireland and the All Blacks are really 
going to be pushed to get back into this test match. Well, this is the man whose fitness was in doubt throughout the week. But what a moment. And you can just sense it now in the crowd. This is an Irish team that were written off by everyone. They have the chance now to make history. There's a long way to go in this game, but 19 to nil with the kick to come. That is a huge lead. Well, just listen to the crowd, they're buzzing. Can't believe it. Well, it fell into the right place for Ireland. It could have gone anywhere that ball, but it fell right into the lap of Carney. And he just streaked away. off the posts so it's an unconverted try scored by Rob Carney Steve Hansen I'm sure can't believe it just watch here as it bobbles and that's just whether or not it was going to land favorably for either team it landed favorably for Ireland and that's the start that they've had that's how good they've been Well, all through the year, this great all-black side has responded to adversity, but they've not had to come back from something like this. The kickoff, Tona this time. Nice aerial skills by the big man as the all-blacks get in there to try and disrupt. It's coming, though, for Murray. And Dag waits. David Carney is right there in the yellow boots. There it is for Smith, but again, there's Carney back again. And they are hitting these rucks really hard as Kieran Reid serves it up to Savia. Now here is Cruden. Just looking a little out of sorts at the moment as he ran around in circles. Now he gets it, Cruden. Hands it on to Ben Smith. Has a little crack at the line. Puts the kick in and it's uh, well picked up by Rob Carney. And it's recovered by Nonu. Loose pass though to Whitelock. And big Sam Whitelock is at halfway. We're 20 minutes into the game as Nonu kicks. And well, Carney did his best, but the flag is up. The flag is up, so a little game going on. The call wants it quickly. He put his hand on the over the line just before he released the ball. It's just a slip. You can see his right foot there slipped underneath him because he had such speed going forward just to make the catch. He couldn't stop himself in time. Short line out for the All Blacks. So the All Blacks win it through Kieran Reid. Out to midfield it goes. And Brody Retallick, who only found out this morning he was playing. Here's Dag taking the in pass. Irish defence pretty solid though as Andrew Hoare snaps it up and lays it back. Now Aaron Smith away for Cruden. Lua Tua ranging wide. Good defence on him though by Paul O'Connell as Aaron Smith again. Whitelock looking for very quick ball as Nanu probing, having a look. Sexton gets to him. He slipped is uh, front on now here's white crockett on the charge as the all blacks build right in front of the goal post off now to whitelock he's been involved twice in the move already retallick swings it wide loose pass now cruden gave it up to lua tua he in turn got it back on the inside and the all blacks continue to threaten here as aaron smith here is Falmoina. Ball jolted clear and jolted forward. Well, better concerted attack from the All Blacks. Look at the skill from Lua Tua. Look at that pass. Skill level. He was going to get pushed into touch. Managed to stay and keep both feet in play and then flick it out the back door. From there, across the foul, Moina. He gets hit pretty hard here. Underneath and over the top to both the locks. O'Connell and Tona knock him down. But better from the All Blacks, more direct. I think in the first 
uh, 20 minutes they were very standoffish didn't want to take the contact that was better it was direct and there's a couple of what a couple of hundred test caps on the bench Nisbo yes both players ruled out of course after Twickenham last week chance for the All Blacks to have a little chat here Sam Whitelock doing most of the talking just waiting while Kean Healy gets attended to he's been well fired up in this game but he's back to his feet Just a great shot from the ultra slow motion camera of Luatua thinking about the process. You could see there, he just braced himself, braced his body, and then you could see that he thought, well, this is what I've got to do, and implemented the school skill perfectly. So the new man in the middle of that front row, Sean Cronin. Crouch. Kean Healy on the near side, the loose head side. Mike Ross Blind. on the far side. Set. Yes, mate. Big scrum for Ireland here. The All Blacks will go for it hard. But Ireland holds up pretty well. And a little pass. Gee whiz, what are they doing? Still there. And that'll be a five metre scrum. Yeah, hit, it, hit the corner flag, Hit the it? corner flag, so that... Charge down, went back, post in, 22. Oh, well, he's yeah. gone for a 22. It's good referee. He's exactly right. It's a charge down. Hits the post. Off the All Blacks. 22. When did it go out? No, the guy forced it, didn't he? Yep. Behind behind the flag. So it's gone oh, off yeah, the flag actually, Yeah, of course. Yeah. So Sexton drops out. And Whitelock just got a fingertip on that. But Ireland are hungry. Thrown in his first man there. Now Murray sends it off to O'Connell. He can be inspirational, Paul O'Connell. Don't forget he's a Lions captain. As Murray makes the kick, waiting for it is Jane. Immediately hands it off to his great mate Israel Dagg. And now Julian Savia, who hasn't been in the game yet. Ben Smith, probing his way downfield, runs into Tona. And Smith hands it on for McCaw. Here are the All Blacks, right on the 10 metres line. Retallick. Aaron Smith again. As they endeavour to crack this Irish defence and they might through Ben Smith. Got it away to Aaron Smith. Had Cruden on the inside, didn't see him. But they're just creating a few little gaps here and there. Andrew Hoare desperately hanging on. And he's managed to get it back. Good strength. As Aaron Smith on to Ben Smith. Now Jane hands it on to Lua Tua. Nice little step. And they're seven or eight metres short of the line. Out it goes this time for Reed. Really testing this Irish defence now as uh, Cruden drops the little kicker behind. Here comes Sevilla. Running a beautiful angle. And one of the ultimate try scorers in world rugby. Gets the All Blacks back in business. And what an excellent piece of vision from Aaron Cruden. The All Blacks build up was superb. Think about Ben Smith breaking the line inside to Aaron Smith. And from there, the All Blacks attack just structured itself together. There's the break. He goes off with step back on the inside. Lovely little pass. Nice and patient, Aaron Smith. Took the contact. And look at the vision from Cruden. Recognise that Carney's trying to make his way across. Finds the space. Severe pounce. And the All Blacks strike back absolutely when they've needed to. Well, they absolutely had to be the next team to score, didn't they? Just to try and stem the bleeding. Fantastic read by both players. And now, well, silence for Cruden as well. Converts the try from in front. 19 points to 7 now. As Julian Savia comes up with his... 19th try in test matches in just his 20th test. I guess the big psychological hurdle for Ireland is what do they do? The All Blacks have had the, the ball for a long period of times now. It's very evident what they need to do. Score points, get ahead. Now Ireland a blistering start, but haven't been back in the game since then because they got the points on the board. They've gone slightly more defensive than what they were in the opening 20 minutes. 
Just over 13 minutes remaining until the break. Sexton's kick is deep and fielded by the captain. Just out from the 22. Outside. Aaron Smith has Aaron Cruden standing really deep. And Murray comes at him. Okay. And this uh, may not, no, it won't. Taken down by David Carney, gives it off to his brother Rob. Let him go. And again, Ireland. Again, Cruden says, I'll do this. But he doesn't quite get there. And Murray snaps it up. Yeah, he said it's open play. And the All Blacks are okay then. But Ireland still have it. Tommy Bowes come in. And Ireland try to build down this left wing side. Here's Cronin, the reserve hooker. Lays it back. And this time, Falmawim is not in a very good position. But the All Blacks have got numbers there, but it hasn't fallen their way. And O'Connell gets rid of Retallick and is put down in the tackle of McCaw as Murray swings it away. Sexton. And uh, this time the kick is fielded by Dad and he clears. Not making a great deal of ground, but happy to get it out. Good tackle from McCourt. He got rid of Retallick said O'Connell. He started this game superbly well. He's an inspirational player anyway, let alone when he wants to throw his body around. He always does, no question about that. McCourt, though, equal to the task, the captain in around the hips and drop them. They might just try a drive here. Had a long talk to forwards. Just look at the position of O'Brien. He's playing at halfback, so he'll, if they do decide to drive, he'll latch on to the ball at the back of the wall. There he is, number seven. And Sean O'Brien. And it's been effective so far in the game. Very hard to combat when it's done well. And it is being done well by Ireland today. Murray wants it. He's got his hands on it. He can't rip it clear from his teammate. Now he does. He flicks it back on the inside for David Carney. And Murray awaits once more. Now it's Healy. Oh! Oh, dear. Not often Richie McCourt gets piled over the top of. As Sexton is O'Driscoll. Nonu had to have two shots at him. Got him in the second occasion. Now here's uh, Ross. Taken down by Aaron Smith, but the build-up is good again. Darcy chased and taken by Savia, who drove him back three or four metres. Now O'Brien again, who lost his scrum cap in the previous move. As Connor Murray slings it across to O'Connell. All Blacks making a lot of tackles in the game. McCaw, he got it right. Ireland drive it on. Now Murray slings it wide for Sexton. Goes on his own. Farmawina landed on top. Murray again for Tona. This is relentless from the men in green. O'Connell signals away to the right. Now he hands it off, but the All Blacks are ready. And he's had to blow the whistle here. Nigel Owens, it's not going to come out. And it will be an island scrum. But they are playing magnificently. Oh, but they're, st they're just playing with some brutality. They're, they're, not, they're not picking space, they're just picking contact. And they're actually winning it at the moment. The key moments there, though, New Zealand did come forward. Falmoina a couple of times. You can see there, McCaw, perfect timing. Connor Murray had his hands on the ball, so he was able to come through and tackle him. O'Driscoll pumps his legs forward. You can see there, they're just winning the advantage line. But at the crucial stages in this movement, New Zealand actually did win it and went forward and stopped the flow when it needed to be stopped. There's Falmoina, makes a good tackle there, and he makes a good tackle not long after this on Healy. Huge work rate for a tight head prop, Charlie Falmawina. Okay, so it's a five metre scrum. Attacking ball. And Ireland have got some potent 
backs. Yeah, we'll with it. Let's just see what part O'Driscoll plays Quite in this. Oh, they look set for a target. The, the Irish in the back line. Plenty of options. Darcy and O'Driscoll are basically right next to each other. Carney, David Carney is just in behind Sexton. And they've been managing to get that right hand side up quite well, Ireland. But he's looks also dangerous off the back. Fight. Set. Yes, nine. So Connor Murray drops it in. It's a good straight scrum too. Now it starts to twist, but off it goes. Sexton. Away it goes for Darcy and penalty against the All Blacks. Scrum went down. Number one. So White Crockett. And I'm sure they'll take the three here. Tuck is down, OK? A little bit of deliberation, but Paul O'Connell eventually pointed to the post. Well, what about this st uh, statistic? 31, nearly 32 minutes of the match gone, three penalties, and all of them against New Zealand. But low penalty count. Oh, Ireland... Yeah, in 30 minutes of rugby haven't conceded a penalty how good is their discipline well they've just been too busy playing haven't they they've just gone out where out there that that really good start you could just sense the belief seeping into the team and this is a very handy three points soon after the all blacks scoring a try just yes, telling them okay. not back in the ball game ball just yet so i'm dealing with a clear and obvious okay It's another three. 22 points to seven. Ireland lead. There's Joe Smith. Penalty for Ireland, scored well, by number 10, Jonathan I guess the one thing about New Zealand this year is statistically in many matches they've been behind or haven't won that battle, but they're still winning games and they are that lethal with limited amount of ball. Ireland be aware of that. Six and a half remaining first half as again Prudent changes the direction. And nicely done by Bo Murray. Not a great deal of depth on this kick. And running around after it was McCaw, he couldn't find it. And it's fallen nicely. And Ireland have it back. As Murray is going to kick himself once more. Salvia waits. And immediately frees it up for Dag. Long kick made by Corey Jane. Almost a collision. But Sexton got it in the end. David Carney's going to chase. And there are players coming from everywhere. And it's a penalty against Ireland. So they do concede a penalty. I just think it's really important for Ireland's sake that they keep playing, that they don't try and sit on this and maybe milk penalties. They just keep on going the way they've been going. Over there. They start getting into a defensive mindset. Well, it, it might just open the door. Well, Aaron Cruden has decided that it's just a wee bit too far for the three. So they've taken the other option, which is the scrum from where the kick was made. See again. Interesting. Yeah, she would have thought a kick for touch. Well, particularly, I don't think the scrum started that well. New Zealand scrum hasn't started as strongly as it what it could have been. Now they've opted, I think, to take, to take the option for the kick at touch. I think Nigel Owens just admitting there that he he thought the scrum was further downfield than it proved to be. That hasn't gone out. No, it hasn't. And it's been nicely kept in by Rob Carney. And he slams it away downfield. Kieran Reid waits. Now Lua Tua. And they move it across very quickly for Dag. Now Savia. This is where the All Blacks can be dangerous. 
when play opens up. Nice timing there by Gordon Darcy. Aaron's got him up. Yeah, he got his hands on the ball, touched it. That was enough. And that'll be turnover ball. Yeah, again, it's the, it's the rule, obviously. They got him up and held him up nice and early. And from there on, they can just fall and collapse and lie all over the ball wherever they want, which is what they did. The guy attacking nine, straight to the middle. Definitely. You'd have to say, the quarterbacks are just questioning because it's happened four or five times now that not only Smith, whoever's been in their halfback position has been caught by the island players coming through. It's definitely an area I think John Smith recognises as being a threat. New Zealand's quick ball and he's got his players targeting, pouncing on that distributor before they can get, get it free. Murray gets it in. Touch it. No, no, no. It's holding. It's holding. It's a good wrestle. Now up come the front rows, and Heaslip delivers the pass, and Murray keeps it nice and low and makes uh, 25, 30 metres with the kick. You can see there Darcy's come from behind the last okay. foot, so he's come through the middle as well. Okay. Quite legal. Not enough New Zealand players there to stop that counter run. We need to get more numbers to the breakdown and be nice and solid to stop those players coming through. So Andrew Hoare finding Stephen Lua to it. Held in the back there by Reed, about to deliver. Now he does, and Smith works it off to Cruden. Not very much depth on this kick either. And beautifully claimed by O'Driscoll. He's all class, Brian O'Driscoll. He's not held, so he just keeps on going. Fights another five or six metres. As the pass is delivered off to O'Connell. Slips it back on the inside. And now Murray works it away. Darcy, here's Cronin, the reserve hooker. Dragged down by Cruden. Murray again. Now Ross. Murray. Patient build up as they show. Here's Healy bouncing out of a couple, but Nanu finishes it off. Now Omani, the blindside flanker for Ireland. As Murray delivers it up. Tona. Good tackle by Farmawina. But recycling as O'Connell goes in he's got Cronin looking for it taken by Whitelock in the tackle now it's Sexton slips the pass for Darcy got it back Tona might have been a player running interference as uh, Connor Murray at least gives it up to O'Connell now Murray plenty of willing runners here's Darcy Away for Ross once more. Murray now slings it away. O'Brien, who has been outstanding in the first half. As he was at the World Cup in 2011. Kean Healy driving hard. Again, the recycling very good. Sexton goes hard at the line, but Darcy drops it. And the All Blacks look to counter, and here they come through Corey Jane. And uh, the chasers are coming. Getting back is Rob Carney. He's a little bit lonely, but he's got his brother there now. The All Blacks getting numbers, but he's done really well. Brilliantly well. Now Murray clears it away. And here's O'Driscoll from Broken Play. Some of the forwards taking an age to get back, particularly the Irish forwards. But now they're getting there slowly. And he's going to boot it out. And uh, Nigel Owens... There's still time left. There seemed to be time left. The players... <laughs> Looks like it is half-time. Yep. Great relief, relief to the Irish, no doubt. But, boy, have they played well in the first half. 22-7 to seven they lead. Well, what a half from Ireland. The challenge for them is now to not lose that momentum while they're in the changing room. Let's hear from uh, Kieran Reid. Kieran, that's probably the toughest 40 minutes of rugby you've had all year. Uh, 
yeah, it's just from our point of view, really, we're just not there, so, um, hey, we're going to turn it around, otherwise we're going to be a bit embarrassed to come full time. I mean, what's been the main problem, do you think? Oh, just our discipline and our attitude, so, uh, we just can't, can't let that happen again. Thanks, Kieran. So there we are, Kieran Reid, part of an all-black team which finds themselves well down at half-time here at the Aviva Stadium in Dublin, Ireland 22, New Zealand 7. So this will be a bit first 10 minutes in the second half to see whether the All Blacks can be the first team to score. That's pretty important, Justin. Yeah, it certainly is. And you get the feeling that that's what everybody is thinking here. When are the All Blacks going to strike? OK, so the whistle blows. We're underway. Second half as Sexton makes the long kickoff. Taken by Aaron Smith. Off it goes to Lua Tua. And the All Blacks are going to clear this from inside the 22 with Smith. Again, it's only drifted about uh, 10 metres, been lost forward, and now the All Blacks can counter as the long pass comes out in the midfield. Here's Dag, slings it away to Savia. The kick and chase, and uh, the bounce of the ball is favourable, and is hacked away by Carney, straight into the arms of Lua Tua, and he gets the big legs pumping onto the 10 metre line. He goes, and he sets it right in centre field for Aaron Smith. Away for Cruden. Jane is there, now Hoare. Works it across to McCaw, standing wide on the right wing side. The Irish defence has been pretty good and they've won themselves a penalty as McCaw held on. Yeah, Sean O'Brien, I tell you, he's really made a good fist of this open side flank. Berth, you can see there with the headgear, he's over the ball. McCaw is quite clearly holding on. You can see O'Brien is supporting his body weight because he's got his hands on the ball. He's not using the ground or anything to prop him up. His hands are on the ball, so he's got good leg position. Nice and strong. He's a big boy to move anyway. Guys, I've just had a word with Declan Kidney, the great uh, Munster coach, and man, who was the coach of Ireland, and he said he's never seen Ireland play. Best 40 minutes of rugby he's ever seen from Ireland. He thinks they'll never get a better chance to win. Well, they've had opportunities in the past. And just haven't quite been able to cash in. 73 was the best effort, a 10-all draw at the old Lansdowne Road, which is right here, of course, where the Aviva is. Here is Ireland with the ball again. Across and deep centre field it goes for Heaslip. Now Murray. And a little pop pass on the inside for Carney, a set move. Just a little bit laboured, though, and forward as well. And uh, now Nigel Owens can't hear his assistant Sorry, referees is down. so he is uh, going to need some remedial work done I like that from Ireland it's look so it's, it's very easy okay? it's no, I hear anything was for something there. that has worked for teams not to go back to it but this is the same setup the same fine. move that they made the that break on fine, for the yeah. try in the first half and they are confident enough to have the variations to go back to that move and try and break the All Blacks open again and to be fair the space is there. Well while this is happening and while Nigel Owens gets his communication gear repaired, Andrew Hoare leaves the field quite lightly for the last time as an All Black, he just takes a look up to the crowd, Dane Coles is on in 16. Yes well Andrew Hoare would have been told at half time that's the way they work, he would have been told no doubt at half time and a few handshakes there. Notably one from Kevin Mialamu, his old hooking yeah. mate, if you like, who's running water today. So that may well be the end of it after 83 test matches. So in the meantime, the All Blacks have had time to think about a move that they think they can crack this Irish defence open with. You can see there O'Driscoll is nice and tight to Sexton. And then on the far side, David Carney. Israel Dags really wide from the scrum. He's a good 25 metres from where the scrum is, right on the outside. So you'd expect Crouch. the opportunity is on the left because what he's done by having that width is create nine. the option on the left that's made the Irish Set. stack that side. Yes, nine. Perfect. So Smith gets it in. It and he creeps away to the right. And in fact, he swings it away to the left. So here's Cruden with Nonu. Off it goes to Ben Smith. And he's well contained. Aaron Smith again frees it away for Cruden into midfield for Retallick. 
and it's been lost forward. And then Ritalik tried to slip the pass to Falmoina. Well, those are the mistakes that Ian Foster was talking about. Just not coming off today. Not a great sign that they're making them early in the second half. You can see that, that was Healy just getting a hand in there. Yeah, he actually knocked it back to the Healy, didn't he? And it went into Ritalik's hands again, who then knocked it forward. That was the reactional thing. Quite unlucky there, the All Blacks, really, to be fair. Ritalik's been so good at the line with his decision-making. All year, being that first receiver, sometimes he carries, sometimes he hits his forward partner, or at other times, like we saw at Ellis Park, he hits the first five out the back, which led to a try. He's been very, very good in that area all year. But let's quicken this up, let's get in, please, and let's get on with it. So Dane Coles. Come on, let's get in, lads. Two replacement hookers on now. An early introduction Cuts. for Sean Cronin. Find. Set. Yes, man. Yes. So Connor Murray. <laughs> and, uh, well, you don't see it very often, but uh, Nigel Owen said he put it under his own forward's feet. Well, he didn't want to put it in at all. They were under pressure but they've taken the tap quickly. Reed, they didn't get back 10 metres by a long way. And it's going to be another 10. And they may well consider now a scrum after Reed took the quick tap. I think they'd better just to tap and go. The scrum hasn't been super solid, but they, I think Ireland are thriving on the structure. They're quite liking the set piece. Their scrum's solid, they're able to set their defensive systems here. The All Blacks are so very good off turnover ball, so quick taps, getting in behind, trying to take the tempo. It might just invigorate the players as well, get, the, get, their, get their body language, get their, you know, their speed and tempo that they want in the game up just by initiating something different rather than going to this, this structure. I guess plus also, you know, the All Blacks are chasing the scoreboard and the more they go to this scenario, the more it eats up the clock. The only thing I can think of, Justin, is they just want to try and take those Irish loose forwards out of it because they've been outstanding. Commit them to the scrum. Again, the All Blacks have the numbers away to the right and uh, they may well swing it back again they do so Cruden away for Ben Smith Cruden gets the little wrap around Cruden making good ground got the pass off to Nonu and he puts it there for Aaron Smith to clear now Whitelock as they are inside the 22 and Aaron Smith for Ritalik uh, flying at him was uh, Healy now here's Cruden chased across by O'Brien McCaw gets his hands on the ball well and truly contained, but it's there again as Aaron Smith. Now, Cruden, he's just creating a few little gaps with his running. Now here's Retallick, always willing to accept the ball. Off it goes to Nonu, and wide or intercept by Tommy Bow. But he got tackled at exactly the same time. And the clearing kick is made. Not out. So Dag slings it wide. Now here's Corey Jane in a bit of space. That gets knocked away. Knocked on by an Irish player. So he's playing advantage here. As Aaron Smith works it away to Dag. Here's Coles. Coles having a bit of a dab himself. Almost to halfway. Advantage over. The advantage is gone. Here's uh, Falmawina. Fights through a couple. Good run by Charlie Falmawina. Just five metres in Irish territory. Penalty coming the All Blacks way. And it doesn't come back. Too slow. And so... Sam. Now this is five metres in All Black territory. And uh, Aaron Cruden, well... I've seen them kick goals from this I, sort of distance. I think definitely take it. He's going for touch, but... It's not 
an overly difficult kick in terms of the width or anything. It, yes, it's got some distance on it, but they're backing themselves, the All Blacks, and Ireland will be aware that they can strike and strike at any time. The discipline's been good so far defensively, but they're really going to be under the pump here. Interesting the way the All Blacks are going to the short line. They've got Falmoino, Retallick and Crockett. Two props out in the back line. So Lua Tua right at the front. Whitelock. McCaw's in there. And so is Kieran Reid. And back goes Whitelock. And he doesn't get the ball. It was underthrown. And has been claimed by Tona. and desperate they're not going to get this back the though ball was formed, scrummed down. and the all blacks well they get a reprieve and sam whitelock did extremely well there they lost the ball but the reaction of whitelock he got underneath tona who went up and managed to secure the ball watch whitelock's reaction here he recognizes we've lost it down he goes to the ground and from there he's the man who gets keeps the, the jumper up we don't quite see it there and manages to create a collapse more and the All Blacks get another opportunity That's nine minutes game. gone second half Crouch. same standards now please bind set yes nine Smith in a prime attacking position stay down slings it away now Cruden away it goes to Savia good tackle on him though by O'Driscoll but the attack continues here is a run from Dag close just couldn't quite get it down I want to check if that touched and Time out. okay let's go let's go oh, wait. he wants to check that it might have touched the line looks like it's up doesn't Time it out. Graham I'm happy with the momentum I just want you to check if there's a hand underneath the ball as it went to the on the line, okay? So did it touch the line? Momentum and everything is fine. Just check the grounding, please. Well, there's no Thank celebrating you. here from the All Blacks. No. He put the hammer down, Israel Dag. Yeah, yeah, you know. It's a great burst Good. through the middle from Sevilla, and then the recycle was super quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It did look like for all money he was going to get there, but look at the defence from Ireland. Oh, he's certainly short. But he's happy with the momentum, Nigel Owens, he said, so it's just whether or not he actually gets to the line, Dag. Oh, there's a hand under there. Wow. Well, let me get this off this piece, okay? Graham? Yeah, hang on, Nigel, just going back for that other angle. Yeah, okay, show me that other angle again, please. Yeah, yeah. This is the angle they're talking about, absolutely. You can see here, he's short, momentum carries him over. Okay, can I tell you what I've seen? But there's hands underneath. Yep, go on, okay. Nigel. Unless you tell me any different or a different angle or a better view, it looks to me like the ball is held up with an arm underneath. Yes, yes. yeah, I'm with you on that. Okay. Now the All Blacks have to come all the way back. Well, the All Blacks had a look at the replay and they all headed back to halfway. Interestingly, they were looking at the same replay on the big screen that Nigel Owens was. They're all standing in the same spot. They obviously thought different. Oh, it's a tough call. They're all tough, Richie. <laughs> it's a tough call. They're all tough, Richie. Yes. Uh, there's the stand-up comedian coming out and uh, Nigel Owens again. Just keep it going now. Time on. Okay, so it's all black ball, remember? In it goes from Smith. Reed holding. Smith swings it away. Cruden off to Nonu. Well defended. Smith gets it off again to Retallick. Who else? Gets himself out into centre field. Now here's Falmawina thundering up the centre. Lays it off again for Aaron Smith. Coles trying to battle his way through. Oh, he just about lost control of that. Here's Falmawina having another go. 
Aaron Smith once more. Holt turns it back on the inside for Whitelock. Rook is called! Rook called! Just trying to work them around. Now Nonu, short pass, ripped away. And Ireland have got the ball back. All Black's not looking sharp on attack. No, he just ripped it out of his hands. He's penalised the Irish for obstruction here. Number four can wreck that and took the chaser out. Yeah, All Black's coming through to charge down, obstructed by Devon Toner. And it looks like a change is going to be made in the All Black back line. Ryan Crotty about to come on there. It was there. Oh, this is you know, like, that's a tough call yeah because the ball was already you'd think almost on its way yeah, you'd think so i tell you though this is this is the three they could have taken earlier it must have been that cruden thought it was too far has to have been because it makes this it contradicts this decision so all i can guess is richie mccaw earlier five minutes earlier thought that the well aaron cruden said to him it's too far for me well the question is with Ryan Crotty coming on, who's leaving? Israel Dagg Israel is Dagg. leaving. Yeah. So Ben Smith back to fullback, maybe. Yes. Cruden's penalty is successful. 22 points to 10. Taken the All Blacks 12 minutes though to score in the second half. Listen to me. Backing it up. Change being made for Ireland. Rob Carney, who might have written his name in history today, about to leave the field. Luke Fitzgerald will come on in Jersey 23. He's got plenty of experience. 27th test match for Luke Fitzgerald. Ryan Crotty in just his fifth. And Carney doesn't want to know about it. Time out. Well, he was under an injury cloud, Rob Carney. He was one of several players. In fact, I just uh, oh, correction on that. And uh, Driscoll's going off. It's a, it's a, a head knock. I think they were set to replace Carney. But now O'Driscoll's had to go in for a concussion check. Here it is here. OK, well, he might well be back as the kickoff is made by Sexton. Claimed by Whitelock. And the All Blacks have had plenty of possession in the second half as Smith drops the kick just onto the halfway line. And a good contest is won well by David Carney. As Murray works it across. Sexton. Darcy, nice work on his feet from Cronin, who's uh, been very good since he came on. All Blacks piling in over the top. The ball wasn't really protected there. There's an Irish player down. Sexton, I think. In back play. So it may well be Sexton. So they're missing a first receiver. Someone needs to stand up. So it was uh, Fitzgerald who did that as Paul O'Connell slings it across to his locking mate, Devon Toner. Here's uh, O'Brien, who's abandoned the headgear in the second half. Oh, that's been big turnover, big tackle, and Whitelock plows downfield almost to the halfway line. Aaron Smith gets it. Off it goes to Nonu. Remember that uh, Ben Smith is back at fullback now. As uh, McCaw has it, slips the pass to Coles. And uh, ball is turned over. Not sure the player was on his feet, but he's been turned over anyway. Now here's Darcy. Can't get on the outside of Lua Tua, who makes a good tackle. Ball is loose. Ball is there for Retallick. Dragged down by Murray, the halfback. There it is for Nonu. Savia works it away to Ben Smith. Looking to go through Ben Smith. Just on the Irish side of halfway. Long period of play here. And a penalty. Another one for the All Blacks. Yeah, well, they were a bit unlucky not to get the last one. Heaslip never released the tackled player. Seat, then you must release. I asked you quite clearly down there. Back you go, please. Got away with one. They didn't get away with the other. Now the decision has to be made again. And 
a word with the skipper. Well, he wants to know whether he thinks he's got the distance here. And he's going to have a go. What? Well, this is, this is the way that New Zealand will want the game I, to start to flow. Him, I, I explained it that quite clearly. This I asked him arms. again here to release and he didn't. If I have to speak to him again to release and he doesn't, it may well be more than a penalty. Okay? He's talking about O'Brien there. He's had a couple of well, yarns to him. Looks like the All Blacks, sorry, Justin, looks like the All Blacks might be going to the bench again. Owen Franks and Liam Messon about to come on. I was about to say before that, the All Blacks will quite like the game to come up unstructured. It's where they're at their best. I think Ireland prefer the structure. And Driscoll looking king to come back to. Pruden's kick is, he's dragged it. Didn't really look as though he hit it well. He just, he tried to overhead it, didn't he? So it's probably at the extent of his range. He just tried to hit it too hard. It wasn't really the rhythm there. Ireland making a change. And, uh, well, they're bringing off Peter O'Mahony. And McLaughlin on him. Jersey 20, the changes made for the All Blacks, Farmawina and Stephen Luatua. Uh, the players coming off. I think Farmawina's had a magnificent game. I really do. Leaves the All Blacks without lock cover, though. Yes, it does. As Sexton kicks out from the 22. In goes McCaw and claims it. And Ireland having a real go for this. Now Aaron Smith works it off uh, to Nonu. Here is Retallick once again. Aaron Smith, Nonu, looking to line up Kieran Reid. Hasn't had much space to work in today, Kieran Reid. There's Aaron Smith for Cruden. Quick hands for Italic. Cole's got into a bit of a gap. Tops it up nicely for Owen Franks. Just recently on the field. Here's Nonu. Oh, fell over. And lost the ball and got penalised. Everything went wrong. Yeah, he's unlucky, man. on it. He just tried to take the little outside step. Fell. And because of that, he had no supporters around him because he shaped the pass. So he shapes the pass, the little outside step. Because he falls, the all-black player was waiting for the pass. The, the arriving player, Aaron Smith, who was always to the breakdown second or third, was just slightly too late to try and help him out. Tackled, bit unlucky. Tackled by a leprechaun, do you think? <laughs> Maybe it's their day. Good probing kick by Jonathan Sexton. Okay. Nearly three quarters of the way through the game, still 12 points behind. And the crowd trying to ride Ireland home. 1905 they first played. Sean Cronin. Nicely off the top from Tona. Now Sexton slings it wide for Fitzgerald. Rob Carney, who was in danger of going off the field five minutes ago, is dragged down in the tackle. And the ball is there as Ireland. Well, they haven't had a lot of ball in the second half. And uh, here is the new man, Kieran McLaughlin. Off it goes to Sexton. Cronin has been everywhere. The replacement hooker. And the ball is there for Connor Murray. And uh, good front on tackle by Reed on O'Connell. As, as off it goes again to Heaslip. And he slipped a good pass too, but it's been lost. And picked up by Franks. And he'll play the knock on, Ireland. It's not bad though. It's good work. And it's confrontational which they've been all day. There's the distraught Brian O'Driscoll. He took a very heavy head knock. He tried to rush in on Ritalik. I'm sure yeah, he would prefer to be out in the field than sitting there, but he's done, he's played his part, Brian O'Driscoll, under an injury cloud yeah, sure you can before the game. Keep he's come on, he's been into everything. Well, he got, he got sure he'd be willing them home, TJ. Sorry, mate, he got as far as the sideline, but he just couldn't convince them that he was OK. Yeah. 
Ireland 20 minutes from history. Set. Yes, mate. 12 point lead. There's Reed. Leaves it for Aaron Smith. Now Cruden standing outside the 22, but finding a heap of space. And that's a very good kick from Aaron Cruden. He had to make sure that he bounced it, and he has done so. And it's taken town play to near the 22. Well, Joe Schmidt, born in New Zealand, of course. And so also John Plumtree. Now the Brains Trust and the coaching staff. What a big moment it'd be as we see another replacement. Yeah, Ben Franks in 17 for Wyatt Crockett. So Steve Hansen releasing the bench. As Sean Cronin about to throw. Does so. Always oh, over the top. And it's been grabbed by Whitelock. A bit of a break here for the All Blacks as Nonu hands it on. Here's Crotty cutting back on the inside. It's Messi. Now he's got it. Aaron Smith. And he gets Retallick. Now snapped up by Messam. Who only found out this morning he was playing as a reserve in this game. Here's Retallick. Sends it away. Cruden stabs it through. The runner's coming. And Carney gets nailed in a big tackle by Kieran Reid. Whether he was still in the air or not is another thing. And that's, I think, the reason we're getting this crowd reaction. Players are playing another little game over here, but the referee won't allow this. Well, they were going to check now. He With certainly was in the air, but it was from a grubber kick. He sort of jumped into it. What could Reed do? First instinct is that he caught it and landed into him. So unless that flat is willfully taken in the air, we're going to carry on. Have a look for me, please. Thank you. So it's going upstairs here to Graham Hughes. So it's Carney and Reed. like a penalty yeah but you know I do understand the letter of the law you can't tackle a player when he's in the air but Reed was you could see there he was committed it was a grubber kick not a usual bomb so that's been grubbering along the ground it's just bounced and Carney's decided to jump up you know what Hard to pull out, very difficult. Yes, he can see the funny side of it. Yeah, well, he looked it pretty well, to be fair. I don't imagine Kieran Reid can. No, he was frustrated, Kieran Reid. I can see why. I understand his thought process when he was approaching that player. It wasn't a bomb that went in the air, so... But it's just another one of those moments, isn't it? So many times in this game when the All Blacks have got into an attacking situation, there's been a mistake or a penalty. And all the while, the the clock ticks down well the clock becomes important now just 17 and a half as the loose pass is delivered now Cronin gets it off to Heaslip Island playing just near their own 22 as Murray hoist tie Savia waits Bo goes at him. Bo can't lower him though. Two big men. And Savia gets it up to the 10 metre line. Now McCaw. Ooh, that was close to forward. As he shoveled it on. Now Aaron Smith. Away for Cruden. Here is Jane. Gets a nice pass off to Crotty. Looking for support on the outside. As the All Blacks continue to ask questions of this Irish defence, which is holding really well as Aaron Smith whips it off the ground for Cruden. Now here's Ben Smith up in the line. Even though he's playing in 13, he's at fullback now. Coles moves it on. Savia's got a bit of space. And Sexton makes a vital tackle. Ball is there for Aaron Smith. Cruden away for Retallick. And here goes Nonu. Pops the pass nicely for Ben Smith. This is starting to look promising. As McCaw stands over it, Savia puts it on the ground for McCaw to carry on down the blind side. Now, here goes Retallick. Huge work rate today from him. 
Owen Franks. The Franks brothers there. Ben Franks! I think he's got there. I think he's got there. Ben Franks has crashed over for possibly his second test try. And the try is good. Ah, superb from the All Blacks. That time they were direct. They didn't sort of try to throw too many passes at the advantage line. They went nice and solid into players. Got over the advantage line because of that. The recycle was good. And they get close to the line. And Franks pounces. And what an opportune time to score his second test try for the All Blacks. Well, they absolutely had to make that count. Too many times they've been down there today and have not been able to turn it into points. The kick's important. The kick goes over, then a converted try would give them the lead. Good chat, boys. You're working okay? So some running repairs yeah, on the try scorer. Good, okay. In the meantime, okay. uh, TJ, I just think I saw Corey Jane leaving the field. Yes, he's gone back to the bench, and Bo Bowden Barrett is on in 22. Maybe Smith to the wing and Barrett to fullback now. Now Ireland charging early here as Cruden's kick is a good one. So he makes the conversion and suddenly it's closed up 22 to 17. Ireland about to make more changes. Declan Fitzpatrick in 18, Mike McCarthy in 19, Devin Toner, the big man. He's had a really good game leaving the field as we have another look at that. Uh, Powerful run by Savia and the finish by Franks. And Mike Ross, the other player, coming off. So a change in the front row, change at lock for Ireland. Less than 15 remaining. The All Blacks now within one scoring play. Closest they've been for a long time as the kickoff goes down to Aaron Smith. And he's immediately going to send it back and put it into touch. So let's have a look here. Looks like Bowden Barrett back at fullback now. Ben Smith back at... Where's he on the wing? No, he'll go to the wing. Yeah. Crotty at centre. So it really is a reshuffled back line. Well, the fitness of this all-black team has been superb. Ireland now definitely trying to slow things down. Well, they're trying to hang on. They're losing the second half big time. Obviously, points are very evident but also they just can't get their hands on the ball in the right areas and have they got the impact with those players off the bench too Cronin throws O'Connell the captain reaches up and they try and control it with O'Brien at the back of the mall it worked so well for them in the first half and it's working all right here too O'Brien still going with the ball And they moved it away well. There's a long stray all back in there. And now the ball is on the ground. Rock is called. And Back. Healy is standing over this. Hughes. And off goes Healy. Thumped to the ground. Reed was in there to make a tackle. And now a charge by McLaughlin. Here's a cross kick for Tommy Bow. Barrett is up. Oh, beautiful hands, Bowden Barrett. And he released the pass nicely here to Ben Smith. Well, the quality of Bowden Barrett showing through immediately as uh, now he gets the ball again and has a bit of a dab. Snapped up by McCaw. And the All Blacks have that all-important ball, which they've had plenty of in the second half as Cruden works it away to Owen and Ben Franks, the Franks brothers, and laid back as Aaron Smith slings it off. Here's Barrett, spins nicely. Made an immediate impact as Aaron Smith again. Now Cruden. Cruden up to the line he goes. Ben Franks gets a bit of support from his brother once more as Aaron Smith. Here's Savia, turns it back. Barrett again. Played a bit of rugby in Ireland. Bowden Barrett, he sails into another gap. An Irish player is down. I think there was a bit of a head collision there. Maybe with Barrett. Uh, Barrett came out okay. Here's Cruden. And Ireland only hanging on now. As the All Blacks recycle the ball outstandingly well. Oh, penalty. A 
against Sam Whitelock, came in on the angle. Well, Kian Healy's the man down. He looked like he was out cold. In fact, there's a couple of them down. They're just hanging on now, but that penalty, that's gold. Five. Bowden Barrett. Well, I think that's where the injury came. I think as Barrett went past him, the elbow caught him. Here it is here. It wasn't, a, it wasn't an extended elbow. And Healy's having to leave the field. He's hobbling off. He's been heroic today. Yeah, he has. I agree. He's, had a, he's just had a monumental game. Jack McGrath in 17. They can't have many left, Ireland. Now, Isaac Boss, 21, and uh, I think Luke Madigan. They've only got two back reserves now. But what an impact. Exactly what you need as a coach. They must be satisfied. Well, they're obviously still pretty anxious up in that all-black coaching box, but when you inject the player and he comes on and makes an impact like that, he carried the ball about four times and caused all sorts of havoc, Bowden Barrett. Well, when you see that, when you're, when you're out in the field and you see that player come on, if you're on the field, the other players just recognise they need to try and get that ball to the guy who can break them open. Well, it's the replacement hooker, Cronin, who's now been treated as the crowd start to sing the fields of Athenrite. Well, I mentioned Bowden Barrett had spent time in Ireland, uh, just as a youngster, actually, when his family was over here. And he does regard it as his second home. Won't admit to it, but it's understood that he was the Irish under-10 cross-country champion. Wow. Can't remember. You think you remember that sort of thing? Well, you'd think so. Again, Ireland walking to the line-out. Now they get onto a trot, they get the hurry up. They've got just over 10 minutes to hold out this all-black team and create history. And they're getting all the support they could expect as the line-out throw is good. Off it goes to Sexton, who drops a clever little kick in here. And Salvia read it pretty well. Barrett has a hack at it. It's been snapped up, and it's going to be a knock-on. Well, that was clever. Very clever from Jonathan Sexton. Certainly was. And look at the chase. The chase was very good as well. That's O'Brien. But through first was Fitzgerald. He got there nice and early. There's his lip as well. It was just timed absolutely superbly. And they all knew what was going on. They all poured through the line. No All Blacks could sort of block their passage through. Well, what it does is it gives Ireland field position. Maybe even an opportunity to milk the penalty would, that would put the game out of reach. Well, you'd think they'd go for the scrum. But there's been so many changes that the dynamic of the scrum would have changed from both, from both sides. So Connor Murray feeds the scrum. It's under a good deal of pressure. Now it straightens OK. Nobody can get their feet moving. Heaslip snaps it up. Murray away for Darcy. Here's a little kick through by Murray. Bow coming onto this, and Barrett can't do anything else but step into touch. Oh, that's two great plays from Johnny Sexton. It's got the flags waving again, and now Ireland can sniff it once more. I'll tell you who has been very good today, and that's Connor Murray scored the first try, he's been very good at the breakdowns, he's directed the traffic, he's hit the right players, he's gone the right direction, he's had a superb game in the nine jersey for Ireland. This is a big moment in the All Black season, right here, right now, big players need to stand up, and what an appropriate couple in shot, Kieran Reid, Richie McCaw, all their experience will be needed. They'll go to O'Connell, surely. So Sean Cronin, they're staying down the All Blacks. O'Connell gets it cleanly, immediately gives it to O'Brien. Now they've got to make some progress, otherwise the referee will demand they release it. They're crabbing across a wee bit, now they get a little bit of forward momentum. And there's a few backs in there helping out too. Five metres away, still there. Look at all the backs are in. There's only a couple missing now. They go to ground. Now the trick is they go. Oh, they got a penalty. Well, well, well. This is huge. One of the biggest moments you would have to think 
in Jonathan Sexton's career. There's no doubt he will take the three. That will push them outside of the converted try, Ireland. If he can convert this, you'd think they would probably hang on, Ireland. The All Blacks are capable of getting seven. I had no doubt in my mind, but whether or not they can get ten in five minutes is the bigger ask. What a kick, what a moment. The crowd will go deathly silent, deathly silent. Well, the penalty was for collapsing the mall. And now Sexton, well, he's about 14 in from touch. This is normally meat and drink for him. Such a good goal kicker. But this could change and recreate history. It'll look further away than it ever, ever has. Pushed it to the right. Well, after all of that, it's still a five-point advantage. And the All Blacks live. Cruden goes quickly. As we look at the kick drifting away, back to live action. The All Blacks have the ball again. There's Cruden. And the All Blacks, well, they'll keep the ball in hand, you'd imagine, as Ritalik lays it back. Now Nonu, quick hands. And it was loose. Savio goes crawling back into the field of play. And Ireland are back to having to defend a lot. As Aaron Smith frees it away for Cruden. Here's Ritalik. How many times has he carried the ball today? He's in trouble here, though. They need to get it back to All Blacks. Finally did. Cruden in position. Goes wide this time. Here's Reed ranging out. Good tackle there by Luke Fitzgerald. As Cruden slings it away into centre field, just looking for an opening to occur. Aaron Smith again. Now Nonu, Barrett, McCaw, he's got Coles. Coles hands it off to Savia, very close to the touchline, too close. And the clock goes ticking by, wow. four and a half. It does, it's a big hit from Kevin McLaughlin. Well, Johnny Sexton's day is done. That missed kick, his last act of the game. And on comes Ian Madigan in 22 to close it out. Just wonder whether or not the All Blacks there needed to actually kick. Just kick it right down into the Ireland territory, into the 22, and yep. force them to then either kick it back out or force them to do something with it. At I the moment, playing from that deep is quite dangerous. I don't think Ireland have got it in them to run it any... They're just hanging on here. Yeah, they but are. They're hanging on well. Well, they'll hang on when they, when they can defend... Well minutes. inside the All Blacks' own half, can't they? Big throw again for, Sh for Sean Cronin. Oh. And he does, he gets it right. Connor Murray. And now ducking his way through was Ian Madigan. Murray goes wide again. Fitzgerald has a crack. Now the All Blacks have held him up That's here. Right, but it's going to be there for Murray. Charging onto it is... Big Kevin McLaughlin. All the replacement players there. Nonu almost got it. Lost now. Still the clock heading towards the 80. And uh, perhaps history. McCaw's in after this. He's just beaten to the ball and no more. Did well there, Connor Murray. McCaw has hands on it and he's strong. Uh, just has to hang on to the ball. Not going anywhere. In fact, going backwards at this stage, Ireland. Well, if they can hang on, it'll be enough. Crowd right behind Ireland here. Down goes Declan Fitzpatrick. Connor Murray. The All Blacks desperate to get their hands on this. 
There's McCaw piling in, trying to get a hold of it. Can't do so. Now the kick. So now Barrett waits. He's lining him up. And uh, well controlled this time, Bowden Barrett. He's looked really dangerous for the ball, but now it's free. And here's an opportunity. And Pruden glides off into the gap. His support is with Nonu. Oh, he's lost it. Couldn't hang on. Big moment in the game. Massive moment. Snapped up by McLaughlin. Ireland have it back. He's still playing advantage. It won't last long. It's only a knock-on advantage. And back it comes. And uh, this time the kick is made. And, oh, yes, worked out well. Rolled it into touch. That'll kill a bit more time. Connor Murray, he has been immense. They need to get moving, the All Blacks. This is Truden, jinking his way across field. Just slightly out in front of Nonu, couldn't grab it with that left hand. The crowd rises. Two minutes to go. Reed wins the line-out. Off it goes to Cruden. Here's McCaw, trapped inside his own 22. As Smith clears it off, Pruden tries something different. He's given away possession. Well, he had to try it, I guess. Complaining to the referee, but no response from Nigel Owens. So now, can Ireland kill the last two minutes off? Come the day and come the hour. History possibly about to be made here in Dublin, where it all started in 1905. As O'Connell, what a game from the skipper. All Blacks come up off the line very quickly. But Ireland, as we get towards the last minute. What a result this will be. All Blacks can't get the ball. Murray waits. Still on the Irish side. Crowd absolutely roaring. And why not? Still on the Irish side. Penalty to the All Blacks. Now, have they got time to kick it out? No, McCaw's tapped and gone. No, he wants to come back. He's got time to take the touch. Not bothering with it. They're going to run it. Ben Smith. Only seconds left. You'd have to think next time. Here's Kieran Reid. Can they pull it out of the fire? Barrett. Lays it back. Aaron Smith sends it wide to Whitelock. Got to get it to Sevilla. Still stuck around the halfway line. Here's Nonu. Off it goes to Ben Smith again. Desperate defence from the Irish. Well, they're cutting off the outside really well. Time is up. The two Franks brothers combine. Next stoppage will be it. The whole season hangs on this for the All Blacks. Ben Smith. Here's Kieran Reid. Got it back to Ben Smith. They're near the 22 with Nonu. Nonu again. Got it up to, to Crotty. Now they're close to the 22. Crowd all standing. What a moment this is. Here's Cruden, drops the pass off. Savia. Here's Messam. Five metres away. Aaron Smith goes in again. Nonu, standing flat-footed. Lays it back. Aaron Smith scoops it away to Cruden. Here's Coles. What a pass! Coles. What a pass! Ryan Crotty scores! Oh my goodness! <laughs> They've managed it. It's 22 each. Oh, he wants to check for a forward pass. A pass from Dane Coles to Ryan Crotty. Oh, here's the game. It looked good to me. Just checking, yes. It well, looked good to me. If this is. OK, then the kick for the 100% record. Look, Nothing wrong with it. Look fine. Oh. 
surely it's a try. On the second to last, not the last pass. Say again. The second to last one, not the last. Not the other one. The 23 looks okay to me. Yeah. Look at you. Look at the one before. The one before from yeah, the yeah. from the fly half. Okay. That's the one I think. Yeah. You can look at the both. But the, one, the second one looks okay. I agree. Coles is fine. I think this one's fine as well. This is tie time. Well, the crowd thinks it, for, it thinks it's forward. Of course they do. <laughs> <laughs> Big call here for Graham Hughes of England. There's nothing wrong with both of those passes. Well, we've seen some ridiculous calls made this hey, weekend. Yes. Yep, you may award to try. This is fine. It's going to happen. The pass is fine and may award to try. You may, yeah. Well, Ireland are distraught because they're still not going to win regardless of this kick. How much ticker does this team have? They look gone. With two minutes to play, they look gone. Such belief. And now it's all focus on Aaron Cruden for the perfect season 14 from 14 the crowd not silent now again they charged early the kick is he'll get another go at it he has to get another go yep well he has to that's the rules what drama. He gets another go. Ireland charged early. Long charge. And this time no charge at all. Charge early. Stay. This time they yes, exactly. But that's the rules. You cannot charge until the kicker starts to move his way forward. Right, here he goes, Aaron Cruden, and this time he's nailed it, and the All Blacks win, and they stay unbeaten through 2013, the first time it's happened in the professional era. Always, thank you for your wonderful, wonderful support of Irish rugby. Let's have a nice warm round of applause uh, for our There's Brian O'Driscoll. Probably, right, well, they do say his last game against the All Blacks. What a spirited performance from Ireland. You'd probably have to say they are very unlucky. They did enough, you would think, to have won this game. But somehow, this All Black machine conspired to beat them in the dying minutes of this match. Not only managing to salvage a draw with a try, they got two goes at a conversion and actually won the match when it looked all but gone. It looked gone. Such is the quality and the inner and self-belief in this team. Well, disappointment for Ireland, no question about that. They did everything but. And really... I guess Johnny Sexton will reflect on the penalty that missed, which would have given them the eight-point lead, and the All Blacks wouldn't have got back then. Isaac Boss talking to an old teammate there. And it's handshakes all round. I think it's more relief, Justin. I think it is relief because they, they, they will admit themselves they probably... It was, it was too far gone. They dug themselves a hole that only Ireland were going to let them out of. And in the finish, it was the missed opportunity. You'd have to say, Johnny Sexton, if he had made that kick, it was, well, it was beyond. It just showed that it was beyond the All Blacks. 
to get more than the seven. But they got the opportunity with three minutes, four minutes to go. And they did, they had enough in them. They just had enough. You have to feel for Ireland, though, because they were good enough today. They were good enough to win.